A close contest is anticipated in the upcoming by-election for the House of Representatives in the three electoral constituencies, Tano 1, Jitwon 2, and Bara 2. Nepali Congress, CPN Yevel, and Rashtriya Swatantra Party have fielded candidates with strong profile, while CPN Mao Center has remained out of the competition in the April 23rd by-election. Good evening, I'm Abhide Shrestha, and these are the headlines of the hour. Candidacy register, registration for the by-elections in Tanu 1, Chitwan 2, and Bara 2 complete. Another writ filed at the Supreme Court against RSP chairperson Ravi Lamichane. Nepali citizenships handed to Tibetan refugees through Nexus among employees of district administration offices. 500 citizenships, including 30 from Kathmandu, under investigation. The Surat Sessions Court in India grants bail to Congress leader Rahul Gandhi in a defamation case over his 2019 remark about the surname Modi. And APF blank Nepal Police Club 2-0 in the Martyrs Memorial A Division League. Sankata Club also edged past Kumaltar FC 1-0. Candidacy registration for the April 23rd by-elections for the House of Representatives has been complete in Tanho Constituency 1, Chitwan Constituency 2, and Bara Constituency 2. Candidates include Rashtriya Swatantra Party's chairperson Ravi Lamichani, whose parliamentarian post was scrapped, leaders Upendra Yadav, Sarbendra Kanal, Shiva Chandra Kushwa, who all lost in the last parliamentary election. There are a total of 36 candidates in Bara 2, which include 12 from political parties and 25 independent candidates. Most of the candidates in Bara 2 tasted defeat in last year's November 20 parliamentary election. CK Raut led Janmat Party has fielded Shiv Chandra Kushwa to contest against ruling alliance candidate Upendra Yadav, who is the chairperson of Janata Samazbadi Party. By-election in Bara 2 is taking place after Ram Sahai Yadav, who was elected from the constituency, was elected as the vice president. Pushatam Podel is the CPN UML candidate in Bara 2, while Rashtriya Swatantra Party has fielded former DIG Ramesh Karel. In Chitwan 2, Rashtriya Swatantra Party's chairperson Ravi Lamichani will be contesting against Nepali Congress candidate Jeet Narayan Shrestha and CPN UML candidate Ram Prasad Nyopane. Nepal Mazdur Kisan Party's Gyanendra Praja and Rashtriya Jan Morcha's Janak Raj Sharma have also registered their candidacies in Chitwan 2. By-election is being held in Tano 1 after parliamentarian from the constituency Ram Chandra Podel was elected the president. Govind Bhatrai of Nepali Congress, CPN UML's Sarvendra Kanal and Rashtriya Swatantra Party's Swarnim Wagle have registered their candidacies in Tano 1. Wagle has become a candidate of Rashtriya Swatantra Party after quitting Nepali Congress, while former police chief Kanal is a candidate who lost in Kathmandu 7 in the last parliamentary election. Advocate Yuvaraj Podel has filed a writ at the Supreme Court against the Attorney General's decision to give a clean chit to Rashtriya Swatantra Party's chairperson, Rabbi Lamichane, for the alleged abuse of his citizenship. Lamichane had been alleged of using his Nepali citizenship to issue passport while maintaining his American citizenship. The first hearing on the writ has been scheduled for tomorrow. Upon the recommendation of Nepal police, the office of the Attorney General had given a clean chit to Lamichane. On 27th of January earlier this year, the constitutional bench had scrapped Lamichane's position as lawmaker at the House of Representatives. Citing an individual with foreign citizenship was ineligible to be a lawmaker. There are no laws related to refugees in Nepal. Even in the absence of laws, Bhutanese and Tibetan refugees have been provided humanitarian support by Nepal. At a time when Nepal's internal security is linked with Tibetan refugees, a group preparing Nepali citizenship for Tibetan refugees in an illegal manner has become active it has been found that the group has been preparing citizenship for the refugees by presenting fake parents with the involvement of the officials of the district administration offices. According to the Valley Crime Division, Tibetan refugees have been provided Nepali citizenship with the involvement of officials of the district administration office, Kathmandu. According to police sources, more than 500 such citizenship certificates might have been issued from across the country so far. 
Despite the assumption of around 10,000 Tibetan refugees in Nepal, the government does not have exact data. As China considers the Tibetan refugees with security concern, it is a sensitive issue for Nepal as well. The government has been compelled to take loans to support its daily operations as revenues have exceeded expenses. Most of its units have been directed to cut down on costs to deal with the crunch. However, critics opine the government still lacks seriousness in addressing the issue. The latest report by the Office of the Attorney General I beg your pardon, the Auditor General has recommended the government to reduce the number of individuals it felicitates each year. However, the annual awards are continuously used by ruling parties as a means to maintain its equation with interest parties and individuals. This year, on Constitution Day, the government facilitated, felicitated 982 individuals from various walks of life, spending 150 million rupees on the ceremony alone. However, the ceremony is just one among many events for which unnecessary expenses are being made. Billions of rupees are being wasted in ineffective trainings, seminars, vehicle procurement and monitoring and evaluation works. The report by the Office of the Auditor General has disclosed that the government spent 5.19 billion rupees in trainings and seminars last fiscal year. 1.87 billion rupees was also spent on procurement of furniture. The GDP to government expenses ratio increased by 27% last fiscal, which, is a decade, which a decade back was 22.5%. Unnecessary expenses have been made by all three tiers of the government as province governments had arrears of 7.48 billion rupees. The government has been in a number of occasions recommended to reduce the number of ministries, scrap irrelevant bodies, boards and departments. However, the recommendations are yet to be implemented. It's time now for our segment Public Pulse. Will you text us with your opinion? Public Pulse. But before that, let's take a look at the results from yesterday's poll. Yesterday we had asked you, what could be the reason for a large dearth of qualified human resource in the health sector? 30% voted for A, ignoring public health, 40% voted for B, impact of exodus of human resource, and 30% voted for C, lack of facilities. And here's today's question. Why has the government's decision to cut down on unnecessary expenses not been implemented? Your options are A, indifferent to financial crisis, B, government itself spending too much, and C, non-cooperation from bureaucracy. The voting is on, type NEWS, select your option A, B or C and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. In our public voice segment today, we have asked people in several provinces how have, they, how have the lawmakers tabled their issues at the parliament. Let's take a look at what they had to say. Public voice. <laughs> Paul <laughs> शिक्षा कृषि सामान्य अन्य अन्य कुराहरुमा पनि कुरा राख्नु भएको छ विशेष मुद्दाहरु चाहिँ उठाएको छैन केही मुद्दाहरु चाहिँ अब मात्र उठाएको चाहिँ थाहा भएको छ कृषिका कुराहरु कुनै पनि उठाउनु भएको छैन हामीले दिएका महत्वको अहिलेसम्म अब पदर पनि भएन जित्नु भएको अब प्रधानमन्त्री नै हुनुहुन्छ उहाँले अब कुरो नउठाउनु त कुरै भएन नि हाम्रो क्षेत्रको विकास निर्माणको लागि केही आवाज उठाएको जस्तो लाग्दैन सांसद भने पनि अब प्रधानमन्त्री नै हुनु भयो हाम्रो क्षेत्रबाट त अब विस्तारै गर्दै हुनुहुन्छ होला State Oil Monopoly, Nepal Oil Corporation, NOC has reduced the price of petroleum products by up to 10 rupees. 
The NOC board meeting has announced of reducing the price of petrol by 3 rupees per liter, diesel by 10 rupees per liter, and kerosene by 10 rupees per liter too. The revised prices will come into effect starting midnight tonight. The corporation has also reduced the price of domestic and international aviation fuel by 10 rupees per liter. Based on the revisions, petrol will now be available for the public at 175 rupees per liter. Diesel and kerosene will be available at 165 rupees per liter each. Moving on to international news, Congress leader Rahul Gandhi has been granted bail in a 2019 defamation case and his two-year jail sentence was paused until a decision on his appeal challenging his conviction. A Gujarat court will take up his appeal on 13th of April. Gandhi, accompanied by sister Priyanka Gandhi Vadra and several other Congress leaders, including three chief ministers, approached Surat's Sessions Court with an appeal to set aside his conviction over his Modi surname comment seen to be an insult to Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The former Congress president need not appear in court for the next hearing. If Gandhi's conviction is not reversed, his disqualification as an MP will stand and he will be barred from contesting elections for eight years. It's time now for the sports news. Sports news brought to you by Lakshmi Steel, Nepal may guarantee number one quality. Nepal Police Club have continued their poor run of performances at the Martyrs Memorial A Division League. In today's match, Nepal Police suffered a 2-0 defeat to departmental rivals Armed Police Force Club. First half of the match played at the Chiasol ground had ended goalless. Armed Police Force then broke the deadlock in the 58th minute as Hari Karki scored from a corner served in, the, in by Nabin Lama. Despite efforts to make a comeback after being a goal down, police failed to convert their chances while APF made the most of an error by police custodian Satran Choudhury in the additional time as Subhas Gurung scored in an empty post. Police remain without a win after six matches and have a single point at the bottom of the table with five losses. Meanwhile, with three points, three wins, APF have ten points. Meanwhile, Sankata Club defeated Kumaltar FC 1-0 at the Martyrs Memorial A Division League to climb to the sixth position of the points table. In the match held in the Anfa Complex in Sadhabatu Lalitpur today, Sankata opened, the, opened its account in the 27th minute as junior Ankege scored the goal, utilizing the chance created as Dev Limbu tried to stop Nelson Konfo's attempt. Komentar continued to challenge Sankata in the second half, however failed to find the net. The team's attempt in the 72nd minute was saved by Sankata defender and captain Kuldeep Karki. Kumultar could not find an equalizer and lost its second consecutive match, which was also its fourth overall loss in the ongoing season. The team is in the ninth position in the league table, while Sankata have climbed two spots in the points table, collecting 10 points so far. Anjila Tumbapo Subba of women's national football team and badminton's Prince Dahal have been awarded as the NNIPA Outstanding Players of the Year. Organizing an event in the capital today, Nepal National and International Players Association NNIPA awarded 100,000 rupees to Subba and Dahal. The association awarded outstanding players of 27 different sporting categories in the Nepal Olympic Committee. This includes Yamayong Rai of Archery, Deepak Adhikari of Athletics, Sadhav Acharya of Golf, Nishma Shrestha of Cycling, Salina Shrestha of Volleyball, Omkar Singh of Fencing, and Satya Naran Mandal of Gymnastics. Cricket, however, was not included in the award ceremony as the sport is not associated in Olympics. The association also said no recommendations were made by the Taekwondo Association to felicitate any Taekwondo player. Meanwhile, Subekcha Khatiwara won an award in para category and Chanchala Danwar for karate. Golf's Sadhbhav Acharya also won the talent award. Dhruva Tuladar of Kantipur Daily was awarded as the Outstanding Journalist. And it's time now for the weather update.
That's all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Good night.